Hello again. This is the second video in the series where I show you how I build my new band saw. This time I'll show off how I made the saw's wheels, but before that, I'll start by putting this part above the lower wheel. I make a rebate for the blade, and here I drill a hole for this screw that will allow me to align the saw's table. I'll use a bit half a millimeter smaller than the screw. Once machined, I can screw it in place. In order to turn the wheels, I must first make some pulleys. I'll start with the ones that will go in the lower wheel shaft. After cutting the two parts I need, I mark the position of the hole for this screw that will allow me to lock the pulley onto the rod. I also bore a hole in the center with a bit the same size as the calibrated rod. I make a rebate for the part of the motor shaft that sticks out, and now I glue the two parts together like this. The shaft is one millimeter smaller than the calibrated rod, so I make the gap smaller with PVC tape. The smaller part does not have a through hole, this way I can firmly attach the pulley to the motor. After setting down the motor on the table, I shape the pulleys until they're the right size. I mark the rebate for the V-belt I'm going to use, and little by little I check to see if it fits in the rebate. Now I can finish making the hole for the shaft and the pulley. Now we have to machine the motor pulley. I repeat the same steps as before. I insert the pulley being careful not to damage the motor and I glue the pulley's cover while tightening the motor shaft screw. Little by little, I give shape to the pulley. These calibrated rods are the two wheel shafts. I'll machine both in the same way. First I drill a 3mm deep hole to insert the headless screw which locks the pulley onto the wheel. And on the contact surface, I machine this rebate locking it onto the shaft. I'll mark the exact position of the pulleys so that I can later assemble the entire system more easily. For that, I'll locate the hole, tighten the headless screw, and mark both calibrated rods with a marker pen. Now I'm going to make a template that will help me glue the rods onto the wheels and leave them perfectly aligned. 
I make sure all the parts are properly arranged and screw them together. I'll mark the circumference of the wheels on this board. Each wheel is made up of two pieces. I'll cut them two millimeters bigger with a jigsaw. Once cut, I can glue in the wheels. To make the hole in the center, I'm going to rotate my column drill. This way I'll get a perfectly vertical hole. I'll use a bit 2 millimeters bigger than the shaft's calibrated rod. I mark the position of this part which will make the wheels thicker and glue it in. Now I insert the calibrated rod in the template I had made. I put it on top of the wheel and once it's in the center of the hole, I screw it to the wheel. I remove the rod for now and make grooves in it with a file so that the adhesive works better. I apply polyurethane adhesive. It's a really strong bonding agent that expands when it dries. Using this system, the wheels are perfectly calibrated and perpendicular to the shaft. After about 12 hours, I remove the template and wipe away any remaining adhesive. Although I don't think it'll be necessary, I'm going to put in the screws that will lock the shaft onto the wheels. And now I can finally place the wheels on the saw, so that I can finally turn their edges. Needless to say, I must turn both in the lower part of the saw. I'll start with the upper wheel. I insert it through the bearing. I put in these pieces that will act as spacers. They will help me make the wheel perpendicular to the body of the saw. I put it in the saw's rear bearing, using only two or three screws for now. I remove the wheel partway to insert the pulley and belt. I look for the marks I made before and put in the headless screw. Before moving on, I'm going to make the two rear stops for the wheels using birch plywood again. I put it in the wheel shaft. Now I can install the motor. I mark the position of its holes and drill them using a bit 1mm smaller than the screw I will use. Now I have enough traction to turn the two wheels.
I tried to make the edge straight, measuring the perimeter with a measuring tape. And finally, I marked the center of the wheel's edge. This will help me make the edge slightly curved. The sides will be 2mm shorter than the center of the wheel. As you can see, the wheel looks quite good, and although it's slightly uneven when turning it, it'll work just fine. I remove the wheel to put in this elastic band. It's the kind of resistance band used in gyms. They come in many lengths and widths, and I believe they'll work perfectly. This will greatly reduce the amount of noise the saw makes. Now I can put the upper wheel in its final position. I'll also put its bearing in the rear, just like before. I repeat the same steps with the lower wheel. This wheel will stay here. I'm going to do some tests placing the blade on the band saw. I position it and tighten the lifting screw until the blade is slightly more tense. I turn the wheel to make sure it's aligned with the lower wheel. As you can see, I have to tilt the upper wheel a little, and by doing so, the blade centers itself. This happens because when curving the edge of the wheels, the blade always tries to find the highest point. I switch on the motor, and everything seems to be working as intended. The blade moves smoothly, and there don't seem to be a lot of vibrations. I'm going to install an emergency switch. I drill a hole for the cable and put the switch in its gap. I'll also make a cover with a groove to hide the cable tin. Finally, I'm going to install this acrylic and plywood protector. In a few days, I'll upload the next video. See you soon!